Hey guys, sorry for getting uh, to you guys late. Um, it's been a day, but hey, I, I, even if I don't get the points, I still want to make sure that I get this uh, this done because it's definitely a topic that uh, resonates with me and my future and my uh, future of my family. Um, what, what surprised you as I read The Color of Law was... The history was known to me that uh, was was already known to me um, being a black man in America and growing up as one. You always hear about the segregation between blacks and whites and all these other races. So um, it's it's yes, it was known already to me and I've heard all these stuff, um, but I really didn't take a deep dive. Um, especially, uh, what surprised me was the, uh, that the comfortability between the people of different races wanting to be close to their own race, um, because it's, the, it become, it has became a norm from the past all the way till now. Um, the next question, uh, would be the what do you know about your community and uh, the zoning policies during the 20th century how segregated or integrated is your community and what would it look like if your community were required to, to have its fair share of middle class and minor yeah um my community has always have always been separated through the act of class and racial boundaries. Zoning policies have affected on being uh, on homes in the 20th century for blacks and Hispanics and whites. Um, when it became more acceptable for these homes to be bought by blacks, you would see a high rise movement of whites moving out and creating their own space and community. Um, because they're very uncomfortable or they're being rich enough to move out and start something else. Um, uh, that's why you see uh, communities like Heritage Hills in Grand Rapids and many more in Grand Rapids. Um, this is the standard today. Yes, there is some integration, but there are a large community to house different races, mostly due to due for the comfortability if our community had its fair share of middle class, minority, and low moderate income housing, you would see a community um, of great promise, where neighborhoods would be wouldn't be overrun um, by race, uh, but have its fair share of integration. Um, the next question. It would be the we typically expect to understand two sides of the story. Is there anything missing from the color of law that might modify its argument? Um, not not much. Not much will modify its argument uh, to my standards. Um, he put it out there pretty good. Um, if what's what I would say is missing is more in depth on the racial equity and how it affects the housing for ethnic civilians and also more uh, more about the topic of the civil rights and how how the people have realized that there isn't a remedy but didn't do anything about it um Next uh, is question number four. If your community and or school are racially segregated, has this resulted in a fewer interracial friendships? I would say, yeah, um, you it would, it would definitely go fewer to none in the interracial friendship uh, factor. Um, and the consequences to that would be, uh, the consequences to that would be basically uh, community, uh, the community and the economy itself just bringing it down. Um, if it, if my community was racially segregated, this would result in fewer interracial friendships, and the consequences would be in a slow advancement in our community. 
and a subjection of fear between all, si all sides to build a bridge of connection and wealth and concluding to a drop in our economy. Um, what is one thing you'll like to be? to better understand how your community and, and home are, and how you came to live there. Um, so I, I'm gonna go off of basically my parents' house. Uh, they live on 34th and Kalamazoo. Uh, we got it back in 2018. Um, I would say that they're I would say I would like to know the history of how it came about, came to be about where how the community has grown from, what 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 type of race it was there, what how was the community prosperity, prosperity if and if not then how what could it have changed or what did change, um, where is it out now, and yeah, um, and the question about uh about John, our Chief Justice, um, um, being wrong about rotting statements. Um, uh, it, it didn't surprise me. Um, a lot of people are wrong. Um, and he couldn't not have his facts right because he probably didn't do his research. A lot of people could be naive. Um, who am I to judge? I'm <laughs> one myself. Um, um, lastly, uh, the question of of or if there's any questions that I would have um, one thing is how can we explain this to our younger generation within high schools within high schools and um, early college um, and how can we per influence them to get engaged and make this for the better um, I feel like our older generation is very was very stubborn and um, was very stubborn and very strict about how they wanted the future to be. And now that we are growing as a, an economy and as a people, um, we are in an age where we can learn from this and be better. So how can we um, as uh, Gen X millennials change the, change the future to make it look not in a color but as one um yeah so that's it all right i'll see you guys in class